Leah, so good to connect with you on this interview where we're talking about sort of your business learnings and your learnings throughout your essentially your career um, since the last time we talked, but we can talk more more uh, generally as well be, be beyond that, beyond the specific time frame. And before we started recording, um, you were talking about this very important theme that I think a lot of folks who are watching this can relate to, which is how do we deal with the doldrums um, in the, I mean, it's like, unless you have a stable job, which for most people is probably quite boring and unengaging and not purpose aligned, but at least it brings in stable money, right? Like, unless you have that situation, most mm -hmm. solopreneurs uh, have, um, yeah, a lot of struggles, you know, throughout their journey with, mm -hmm. Uh, feeling down. It could be financial reasons, emotional, um, energy reasons. So uh, I definitely want to talk about that and your experience with it and how you are recovering and how you have recovered um, again and again. Uh, but first, maybe you could practice your introduction. <laughs> uh, share <laughs> share, uh, share about your, your yourself and your work with those yeah, who are watching. You, George. It's great to be here. Good to see you. And yeah. Yeah, so my name's Leia. I am, you know, I was toying with this, I had a thought the other week of calling myself an authentic well-being coach. <laughs> and, um, I love it. And I thought, you know me, not? I love, you know? Put, put the word authentic in front of it. I love it. <laughs> That's right, you know, and I, and I was like, what does that mean? How, you know, and for me, it's, it's, for me, I do, I teach yoga. Um, I'm all about health and well-being. I have a podcast called The Wellbeing Room. I'm really passionate about sharing you know what i've learned about health and well-being with other people and really want people to take responsibility and control for their their health and well-being so that they can live a long healthy life well into old age and yeah so i'm interested in in sharing about that currently i'm mainly doing that like i said through my yoga teaching and um and through my podcast which is just a side hobby <laughs> for me at the moment and yeah i'm i'm hoping to now also potentially train other yoga teachers in the things that I've learned. I've recently gained my certification as a level three senior yoga teacher um, by Yoga Australia, which is the accrediting yoga board in Australia. So that's, that's exciting for me. That's opening potential doors to, to, you know, to do professional development for other yoga teachers and, and even train yoga teachers to become yoga teachers. So I'm quite excited about that because that ties into a lot of the work I've done previously as a learning designer and as a teacher in schools. So I'm hoping that things will all come to alignment and I can that's help several really people with their health yeah. and being. Mm. Yeah, it's really, that's really neat that you, you have that level of uh, expertise and certification now and it, you're kind of mentoring the next, you know, generation of yoga teachers. And that's really cool. Um, yeah. I realized uh, something else I want to talk to you about in our short time together is, yeah. you know, you're, you are one of uh, my favorite interviewers that I've had the chance oh. to uh, be on a podcast, be a guest for. And so maybe you could share a bit about your tips um, for inter, I mean, not only have you interviewed people, and I think you do a good job of it, great job of it, but you've obviously listened to many interviews. So maybe maybe we could set that aside for the last, yeah. you know, the last yeah. ten minutes. But but let's first yeah. um, dive into this topic that I that all of us probably can can relate to um, here and there, uh, myself included, which is, uh, you know, you you recently had another experience of you know, feeling low. Um, mm. And, you know, maybe you could tell us what 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 could have been the reasons. Um, I mean, uh, as much as you're able, willing to share, but you were saying, oh, well, it, it, it may be physical reasons, like hormonal, it could be, you know, astrological, <laughs> um, it could also be connected to financial or um, other sort of like social, social or emotional reasons. Uh, but tell us about why you think think you get you've you know experienced that or or you you want to say more generally why do you think other solopreneurs experience that and um how you lift yourself out of that yeah yeah no thank you george um yeah it's such a 
such an important topic because I think everyone to some degree experiences periods, whether it's a day, a couple of days, weeks, I yeah. don't know, of of these days, periods where we're feeling inadequate, lacking confidence, um, depressed, you know, just in a hole is another way of putting it, I guess. Um, and yeah, like just recently, just earlier this week, I had an experience where I was in that position. And it for me, it was an experience of feeling, you know, a complete lack of confidence in my ability to, you know, to do whatever, to just to live, to be a teacher, to be, you know, a mother, a daughter, or whatever. I was just feeling very um, disconnected. Um, and and it's when you're in those situations, it's you tend to spiral down. It's really hard to to lift yourself up on your own. I think that's that's what I've been discovering as the years go by and as these experiences happen. And, and like I said, it could have been a hormonal related thing. It could be you know, because just returned from an overseas trip. So there's that, you know, the high of the travel, you know, coming back to reality. Um, there's also the fact that, you know, spending money overseas, coming back to a depleted bank balance um, and also dealing with, you know, changes within my family, you know, parents having health issues, that kind of thing. So dealing, I guess it's just like all those burdens stack up on top of us. And yeah, so working out how to get out of that is challenging and for me I found like that day specifically it was Monday um when I I was sort of on my own and I think a solopreneur solo you know implies that you're generally doing things on your own and I think for people who are working on their own whether that's they're at their home they might be in a co-working space they might be using co-working things like focus mate but essentially we're still on our own. So we're not getting that feedback from other people constantly like we would in a workplace, you know, if you go to the office or something or if you're in a, another place where there's, there's people coming and going, you're, you're seeing people, you're meeting people, you're interacting with people, even if it's just going to a cafe for lunch or, you know, riding with someone in a lift, you know, there's other people around and you're listening to things and there's constant input and sensory experiences going on. And we, I think as we're on our own, that can sort of diminish to some degree. And so for me, I found that night I taught a yoga class. I had people come to my house. We, you know, taught yoga and, uh, and it was that sense of connection with other people that buoyed me up again. Um, and it's, you know, partners can do something similar, but I think that's one level. I think for me in those situations, I need more, than just a partner to sort of lift me up. I need, or a family member, I need more people around me. And I think having discovered that, I think that's something to keep in mind. But I think sometimes also we need to just sit in that space as well. It's, you know, we can try and band aid ourselves out of it, but I think sometimes you have to process those emotions. Um, and I, I don't really think we have to dwell in those places because we don't want to buy real estate there, if you know what I mean. Um, we want to be able to move on. So, but I think there is a process of working through that feeling and then hopefully something can lift you up. Like I said, that connection piece, I think that's really important. Um, so that worked for me in that instance. And, and since then, things have been gradually day by day improving. And, you know, I'm seeing you know, connecting with more people now uh, in my circle and feeling more potential for, for you know, each day as it goes on. Yeah. And I think that's all we can really do. Um, yeah. I mean, there's probably more, but I'd be interested No, to hear it's really, I, I so appreciate you sharing about, um, yeah, the, the, the ins and outs of that experience for you and how you started to pull yourself out of it. I think it's really fortunate that you had the yoga class that night it was the mm -hmm. same night right yeah. and like you're witnessing yourself contributing to mm -hmm. others and having that contribution received and appreciated is one of the great healing bombs of mm -hmm. feeling you know disconnected down etc yeah. um so you you were i think you were very fortunate that that happened that night <laughs> Really, right? You know, because yeah. not many people don't. And but I'm curious, like when you have been feeling down, and I agree, you know, just just the partner, like we can't, you know, we can't rely on our family or a partner if we have one for 
for being the, like the, the ideal therapist or something like that, yeah, you know, that's right. right? Yeah. Because we have our yeah. own, you know, we're dynamic of relationship and we need to care for them too. And um, yeah. have you, uh, ha- has it, has it, have you reached out to a fellow solopreneur or some, you know, yeah. Fellow solopreneur when you're in a down state, uh, has that ever been a strategy that's been helpful for you? Yeah, no, I have. And, and we, you know, our mutual friend Mira has been a wonderful help for me on yes. certain situations. And she was someone that popped into my head and I did interview her on my podcast about something related to this, I think as well. So if people are interested, they can check that out. Um, yeah. So, th- I mean, there are people obviously, yeah. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes therapists can be helpful as well, you know, like to, to, to talk to. Um, yeah, but I generally, yeah, I mean, interestingly, I had a co-working session with, with someone this morning and we didn't chat about this specifically, but it was just a good opportunity to say, look, you know, I was having this issue with some business related thing. And, and, you know, I was like, oh, from your perspective, you know, what do you think about this? And, you know, we were able to just, she was shared some ideas with me and thoughts. And I thought that was really a good way to, to connect and, and get some support from, a, I guess, a business perspective, not necessarily an emotional um, relationship perspective. So, yeah. so that was good. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And, and, and this is why I really love facilitating a group of solopreneurs um, I mean, what you're saying is making me realize I need to emphasize that point more. Like, yeah. for example, coming to the group calls can be a, a touch oh, yeah. point for, for mental health. Um, you know, I, right. Like I hear people who come to the calls and, and sometimes they don't have any quite a lot of times, actually, they don't have any questions. And I say, Oh, um, you have any questions? Like, uh, what brought you here? And then, Oh, I just, I'm here for the energy, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah. so that is, yeah, I'm really happy to be able to facilitate that on a weekly basis and i uh, i'm going to start emphasizing that point more <laughs> um yeah, no, i think that's wonderful because a lot of the people that i've met that i find value connections you know have been through your courses or your groups so that's, yeah. yeah definitely yeah. and yeah. i do come to those calls too sometimes just for the connection yeah totally <laughs> exactly you know yeah. i know welcome you there so uh let's switch gears a little bit if, if, if that's okay right now i as you know, I happen to be teaching a, a course called Interview Mastery, and it's about how to get better as a host, as well as as a guest of interviews, whether it's a podcast or, you know, YouTube channel or Instagram live or webinar interview or something. So given that you, like I've, I've, I've t- I talked you up, you know, folks, please do, uh, <laughs> you know, check out Leah's podcast, The Wellbeing Room. Yeah. Yes. And, um, you know, the, you, you know, you can listen to the episode where I was the guest and you can listen yeah. to the episode where Mira, Mira Rao, R-A-O, uh, was the guest. And so I think you do a fantastic job. What have you learned? Let's start, let's start with what have you learned as a host? And I also want to hear what have you learned as a guest of other interviews as well? Mm. Um, and you could speak generally, not just from your own podcast experience, but just being a consumer of other people's podcasts mm. and interviews. What what have you learned as being, what does it mean to be a good host uh, and, and a good guest? So let's start with host. Like how, what do you think makes your interviewing um good like i think it's good uh but what do you think what why how do you prepare or how do you approach the the role that that you think might might be beneficial for other hosts mm. to hear well, firstly thank you for saying those lovely things about my podcast and sure. my interviewing stuff yeah. i don't necessarily think that i'm a great interviewer but but i'll take it um i find I only interview people that I either have a connection with already or I'm really interested in what they do. I think for me that that's essential. If I'm, if I don't know the person from a bar of soap, then, you know, I'm not going to ask, you know, I won't have that interest in what they do. Uh, I often get emails now from, you know, these people, oh, you know, would you like to interview this person there, this, that and the other? And I'm like, well, I don't know them. And no, thank you. I'm not interested. So I, I seek out people that I want to interview. So that's that's really the first step to it is, you know, who do I want to uh, sit down? Who would I love to sit down in a room with and pick their brain about something? That's that's really my my first thought about 
when I select people for for an interview. So it's like someone that I'm interested in, interested in what they do, interested in how they think, interested in what they offer. Um, and it's something that I would like to do, you know, I'd like to explore, go on an exploration with them and, and then also share that with other people. Like, you know, I'm asking the questions for people that can't be there. So for me, it's like, well, I've got all these questions and I'm hoping that other people would be interested in the same thing. And hopefully by asking those questions, it's an interesting discussion and, you know, people get a chance to learn. I'm all about learning. So, you know, um, lifelong learner, that type of thing. So yeah, um, I want to educate people in improving their well-being. So it's always around, you know, how is this going to help improve someone's well-being, and why is it important, and you know, what led them to do that. You know, obviously everyone's got a story about how they came to do what they're doing. So it's always interesting to know a bit of backstory. A lot of the time, you know, I've met teachers such as yourself, and you know, we don't know where they've come from or why they've chosen this particular path. And a lot of the time, as they're teaching, they don't share that necessarily so I'd like to, I'd like to sort of pull away the curtain and go well you know why did you do that or how did you come to that why was it so important for you and I think that helps us generate a relationship with this person get to know them and understand them and so then yeah we think that that's more like a, a friendship or a you know a mutual connection and then that creates that space for for people to share more about what they do and yeah and how that and how do you results that thing. yeah no this is great i i love this very important point of this genuine enjoyment and curiosity that you have about these people um so how do you prepare um yeah maybe you could you could tell us a bit about yeah. that like how, how do you prepare for it <sighs> sometimes i think i should prepare more Sometimes oh, I all of I us. Much no, of course. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm asking the question because I'm like, hmm, how do I prepare? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think uh, I would obviously, you know, read their bio, whatever information I can find on their website or in a book that they've written, or, you know, um, if I, like, I've read, I've interviewed a few people about books like they've written, like your 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 Solgium book, but also other people that I've we've talked about their publications, and so obviously reading what they've done so to get a bit of an understanding of their viewpoints and and use that, those as questions or talking points you know like you wrote about this um can you explain you know a bit more about what that means or you know but then also pointing people back to their publication like oh you know we've just touched on this topic but if you want to learn more then please you know find their book and and get a copy and read about it so um but preparation wise it's more just you know making sure i've got a solid bio for them so I can introduce them. I like people like, I think it's nice to have someone introduce you um, and then having the opportunity, you know, if they want to add to that um, and having a good solid set of questions, you know, you have a minimum of three, but sometimes I have up to seven questions prepared in advance and having them, you know, open on my screen so I can refer to them easily. And, you know, having a, I like to have a sort of a set ending question, you know, like, you know, what's one thing that you've learned you've done to improve your own well-being and get more out of life because you know it's all about the well-being room and getting more out of life so I like to sort of I don't do that every time but most of the time I'll ask my guests you know to answer that like a trademark and I usually, question yeah yeah I just sort of throw it in the end sort of offhand so they haven't really prepared for it and I don't often share my questions with them in advance usually because I'm doing it the night before <laughs> anyway <laughs> so, yeah totally yeah no yeah. that's understandable yeah. and yeah. they you're pulling them out of out of the work they've done, whatever you know. So they mm -hmm. it it should be coming yeah. naturally to them. Yeah. Um, and more recently, I have created like a, a Google form for people to fill out beforehand, um, and and that's kind of helpful because then you know I can ask them to give me their bio and then I can just rework it to how I want to word it, um, and then maybe you know what are some talking points that you would like to discuss? Asking them about that, um, I think, is good too sort of, you know, get them a bit more of a, a space to share what they want to share about too. Um, you know, I recently signed up for that. You shared it. It was a link to this Facebook page for podcast guests and hosts. And um, I was looking in there and I, I sort of contacted one person saying, I'd like to be a host on that guest on their show. And she sent me this form and it had like so much information. It was, you know, your bio, you know, everything and it was like and I was just like I just stopped like I don't want to fill this out like 
if it's you're not interested in doing any yeah. research about me prior, right. then mm. I don't really want to feed you everything about me before we even start. It's like, what's the point? You know, you're just reading off a sheet or, yeah, there's no buy-in. It just felt wrong. That's a really yeah. interesting point, actually. I really appreciate you mm -hmm. saying that because um, that's an, an assumption that many hosts make. It's like, well, you know, outsource the work to the guest. They want to be on my show. You know, they. <laughs> but yeah, the, there's there's no sense of like you said buy-in or sense of um, I am. We're meeting half. We're we're meeting each other halfway, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, gosh, the time is already passing Ooh, so yes. fast and I'm about to be swallowed up by the night here <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in, in my in my in my new uh office here I just moved to a yeah. different country for those who don't know I haven't yet set up the evening uh lighting and uh you know Leia's and on, on the other side of the world where it's still nice and bright um so let's let's finish up by uh, if you want to share with the audience um, what is, how can they work with you? What's something that you would love for people to contact you about a service? Well, people should definitely check out your podcast. So um, yeah. I'll put the link below for that, but anything else you want to say about what kind of service you provide? Yeah. Um, I guess I'd be interested if anyone watching would like to be a guest on the wellbeing room or would like to interview me on their own podcast. If they have one, I'm always looking to meet more people and, and share what they can share with us about health and well-being so if that is something that is you're working in then please get in touch um i would like to make a connection with you first before i interview you though so that's that's a given um as far as working with me i mean i teach yoga classes they're mainly in person but you can join via zoom obviously for time zone differences that might be a problem for people um i'm in the process of refining where i want to go with offers for the future so i can't really offer much more than that at this point in time. Um, but there might be some online courses coming up in the not too distant future, whether you're a yoga teacher or, or interested in health and well-being, that might be something you're interested in. And I know this video will be on YouTube. So, you know, if you're watching this six months from when it was first published or six years from when it was first published, <laughs> then check me out. I also have a YouTube channel, which, um, which I'm very proud of, actually. I've just hit over 400 subscribers, which I know sounds like not much to some people, but... For me, that's a bit of a milestone, and I have absolutely some videos which are near yeah. the, the ten thousand view mark, which I'm like, whoa, yeah. yeah so. <laughs> I know it's impressive, really. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Leah, for um, you, sharing of yourself today, and um, always sharing with heart. And so, folks, well, look at the links. You know, go ahead and look at the links below this video, um, below this podcast, and um, yeah, uh, we'll we'll see you on the other side. So, thank you so much, Leah. Thank you, George.